In this video, we are going to look at a step scheduling problem. And we are going to use linear programming to find the optimal schedule for our step. The University Computing Center is open 24 hours a day. Staffing requirements vary by 4 hour time periods and by day. The requirements for a 2 day cycle are given in the table on the next slide. Staff can work either a 4 hour shift or an 8 hour shift. The 8 hour people are paid at $9 per hour while 4 hour people are paid at $8.50 per hour. In addition, the university incurs an overhead cost of $5 per person working on any shift on any day. The total cost of having one 8 hour person is thus 8 times 9 plus 5 which is equal to $77. The total cost of having one 4 hour person is 4 times 8.5 plus 5 which is $39. How many people should be working in each time period on each day so as to minimize the total employment costs? On this slide, we have the minimum number of people needed for each time interval. This is a two day cycle. So we have in total 12 time slots or 12 time intervals. On day 1, from midnight to 4 a.m., we need at least 3 staff members on duty. On day 2, for example, from 8 a.m. to noon, we need a minimum 16 people on duty, and so on and so forth. Now, let's consider how we are going to approach this problem. Let's look at the very first time interval for example. Day 1, time interval 1. We need at least 3 people on duty. Think about it. Of all those people on duty on day 1 in time interval 1, there are 3 possible sources. One is those people who are on 4 hour shift. And for them, it is pretty straightforward. They start at midnight of day one, and their shift go all the way to 4 a.m. That's it. But what about eight-hour people? There are two possible ways of getting eight-hour people between midnight and 4 a.m. on day one. One possibility is that some of those 8 hour people started their shift midnight. But for the other 8 hour shift people, they started at 8 p.m. of previous night. That is very important. That's why I said there are three different sources for getting people on duty between midnight and 4 a.m. on day one. And that is how we are going to define our decision variables. Once we know that, formulating the model becomes the easier part. Okay, here it goes. This is how we are going to define our decision variables. The first group is called E subscript IJ. E actually over here means 8 hour people. The subscript IJ I means what day it is. It's day one or day two. So I can take on two possible values of one or two. On each day, there are six possible time intervals because each time interval is four hours long. So J goes from one all the way to six. And what exactly is EIJ? That is the number of people who start their 8 hour shift in time interval J on day I. For example, E11 is the number of 8 hour people who start their shift at midnight of day 1. Similarly, E12 
One two is the number of eight hour people who start their shift at four a.m. of day one, and so on and so forth. Similarly, we're going to define F I J. F means four hour people. I once again is the day day one or day two. J is the time interval. Therefore, F I J is the number of people who start their four hour shift. In time interval J on day I, equipped with those decision variables, we are going to be able to formulate our objective function and constraint much easily. Let's take a look. Okay, we would like to minimize the total employment cost from the perspective of the university, and we know that for each one A hour staff member. It costs us seventy-seven dollars, but how many eight-hour people we're gonna need? It's gonna be nothing but the sum of e one one, e one two, all the way to e two six. There will be twelve of them. That's just one part of the story. The other part will be four-hour people. Each of them cost us thirty-nine dollars. How many are we gonna hire? It's gonna be the sum of f11, f12, all the way to f26. We put the whole thing together, and this is our total employment cost function. Because it's cost, we would like to minimize it, and this is our objective function. Next, let's see how we're gonna formulate the constraints. Constraints are nothing but the minimum number of people we're gonna need on each day at each time interval. For example, on day one in time interval one, we need at least three people on duty. So where are we gonna get those three people? First of all, the AL people who start their shift at midnight of day one. That is E one one. And a part we might forget is e two six, because as I was saying earlier, the other part of the AL people we have on duty on day one, time interval one will be those AL people who start their shift at eight p.m. of previous night. That is nothing but our e two six. And of course, we don't want to forget about four-hour people. Only one kind of four-hour people will be on duty on day one in time interval one. That is nothing but F one one. The sum of those three gotta be at least three. That's our very first constraint for day one and time interval one. Similarly, for day one and time interval two, we have eight-hour people who start their eight-hour shift at. 4 a.m. But don't forget, we have some carryover. Those eight-hour people who started their eight-hour shift at midnight. That is nothing but E11. Of course, there's four-hour、uh, people who start at 4 a.m. The sum of the three gotta be greater than or equal to 10, and so on and so forth. On the next slide, we're gonna see. Very similar six constraints about the minimum number of people we're gonna need for six time intervals of day two, and here they are. In the end, of course, we have the、uh, non-negative constraints, and this is a very smart way of formulating a linear program model for this staff scheduling problem. And the key is we want to differentiate. Two different groups of eight-hour shift people. Some of them start right in this time interval. Some others start four hours earlier. Once we can differentiate those people, we are good to go. Okay. In the next video, once again, I'm going to use Excel Solver to find the optimal solution to this linear program problem. And see how much it's gonna cost us.